Hello and you're all very welcome to Along the Line, brought to you by CK Stream. And we're here outside Feather GA ground for the launch of the Tipperary Ladies Football Adult Championships, which will get underway this weekend. Uh, we're going to meet some of the management and players that are going to be taking part from Junior D all the way up to Senior in the coming weeks. And uh, we're going to head to Feather Town Park now and go meet some of the players and management that are taking part. Dennis O'Shea, uh, championship's just about to start and no doubt you're determined to hold on to that crown. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to, but it's a, it's a big task. I suppose we'll have to try and get out of our group first and, and worry about what comes after that, after that, later on. Yeah, you're kind of in a group of debt there really, aren't you? It is a tough group now. I think there's three semi-finalists from last year, so they're going to be, from the very start, you're going to have to try and get on well, make a good start. Yeah, and I suppose like, we'll all remember that... Uh, We'll all remember the um, goal by Emma Morrissey in the last minute of the county final. And you managed to get a fairly good run as far as the Munster final then after that. We did, yeah. We played quite well in Munster. I suppose there was a lot of pressure on the county final. And after that, then the girls just said they'd relax and, and give it a go and enjoy the football. And we played very well below in Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney to overturn the Kerry champions. And Moran Abbey was a big ask, but it was a great learning experience to, to face one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, because the conditions down there that day were horrendous. And I suppose the fact that you lost the toss um, and had to play against that gale force wind, uh, it was an even bigger task than what it was already. It was a big task, but I mean, look, they're, they're around the block. They took the win. They wanted to put us away early. And, and in fairness, they went for us. And we wouldn't make any excuses. They're, they're another step up. So that's where you want to get to. But there's a bit of work to be done to get there. Yeah. and. Emma Morrissey, like she's kind of getting the habit of sticking balls in the top corner and, and last minute. We seen her against Kevin a couple of weeks ago when uh, it preserved the senior stats for Tip. Yeah, she's a great girl. I mean, Emma comes, she comes half an hour before training, kicking football. She stays a half an hour after training, so it doesn't just happen by itself. She puts in the work and, and you can see it year on year she's improving and, and you know, she's a very professional player. Yeah, and it's what the 14th, the Harinier group, you've Tampa more care and yourselves and Mile Rovers. Mile Rovers. Um, there's no real room for error, really. No, and, and I suppose Temple Moore is our first match and we haven't played them in recent years, but they seem to be really coming strong with young players, under 21 champions for the last two years. A uh, nice lot of count, four county seniors. So that's the match we're, we're getting ready for with Bovin Temple Moore. And I think they have a, they, they have a Kildare senior transferred in as well, so that'll be another addition to them. Yeah, and obviously care, like, um, we don't know what to expect of them, like, uh, obviously, like people said, they're missing Ashley Maloney and that, but they got on with it last year without, without Ashley Maloney and Ashley McCarthy, and they were very unlucky not to make another county final when losing an extra time to Brian Burroughs. They were, I was over to that match, like, and it's great credit to missing those players, they, they, they really brought it down to the wire. Uh, we've played them for the last two years, three times, and we still have to beat them, so... It's a big guess for us to turn that around and I suppose something we really have to turn around. And then your third opponent is Mile Rovers. Like, uh, we've seen exactly what Mile Rovers can do last year and I was only talking to Stuart there during the week and he was kind of out to the same opinion. They probably should have beaten you last year in the, in the county semi-final. Yeah, I think so. I, they definitely had the chance, I suppose, to credit our girls when, when the game was there to be won and lost. Another team would have been a few pints down would have left to go and 
the girls just went after it and dug it out and were just determined to win. And I saw them in the league semi-final this year against commercials and while they were the underdog, they were very clinical. Any time the ball went to the forwards, they seemed to score. So yeah, they have a lot of good footballers. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting group. Uh, for, uh, Danny, we wish you the best of luck. No, then we'll be talking to you soon. Lovely. Thanks, Thomas. Jan, the uh, championship uh, fast approach and then our film playing Arlo in the first game, I suppose. Um, Arlo probably won't have too many senior games playing at that stage, so no. they'll have a lot of their contingent from last year that won the senior championship in it. Yeah, um, look, this is the first year that our Finland have had a second team, so the junior is uh, a great opportunity. We're training with the intermediates and there's a nice mix of players there, so we're looking forward now. We've done well in the league, uh, we're into the league semi or the league final, so we're looking forward now to get going on the championship and meeting Arlo on the 7th of August. Yeah, and I suppose the run that you got in the league uh, give you a lot of confidence going into the championship. Yeah, 100%. And as I said, you know, we have a mix of some girls that haven't been playing uh, competitive football for a few years. And we have some of the younger girls coming up as well. So there's a, a real mix of players there. So they're working well at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose we've seen it in your uh, intermediate league semi-final. You had a lot of players back there that probably hadn't played football in the last couple of years. Yeah. So yeah, we have. So the I think the junior team was a real um, enticement to get girls back that hadn't played football in a couple of years. And um, it's great. They're helping us out a few times at the intermediate as well. But obviously that will have to change in the championship. But they're getting the experience of playing at both levels, uh, which is great. Probably didn't work in our favour for the, the semi-final in the intermediate. But something to reflect on and work when we're going into the championship. Yeah, and I suppose uh, the junior players... Uh, I suppose having the likes of Sam Lambert there training with them and you have the two Englishes that are flying it there with Tip. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to bring on them girls as well. 100% and it's great. You know, we have um, Claire Lambert there as well who is a former county player. So that experience, that training is really driving the girls on and there are some great leaders on the team and it's really the training with intermediates is a fantastic opportunity for our younger girls as well. Yeah, and obviously the second team is usually a feeder for the first team, but yeah. you'd be hoping to keep as many of these players as possible and make a record run at the championship. 100%, yeah. So the under-19s are, the, you know, coming up from the under-19s, the under-21s, um, I think it would be safe to say that some of the girls might have been a bit intimidated by the intermediate team, but they're feeling a lot more confident playing with the juniors and hopefully then they'll develop their skills and their, you know, their ability and bring them up and they'll be making good contribution to the intermediate team going forward. Yeah, well, exciting times ahead. Uh, it's championship only around the corner. Uh, Jim, no, that we'll be talking to you over the course of the year. Hopefully. Seven championship just about to kick off, and I suppose uh, you're opening around one and a half, and uh, couldn't come any tougher. Yeah, tough one to start with. Did a great year last year. Um, we didn't get to see him, unfortunately, this year. I play against him. You know, the fixtures came at the wrong time for them, and vice versa for us. Uh, but look, no, we're looking forward to the, the challenge. We haven't seen much of them paired a bit with yourselves on, on YouTube, but looking forward to the challenge ahead. Yeah, and uh, just talking there to John Walsh and Art Finnan, and we were saying the championship is completely different this year. Like, there's no safety net of the county semi final. Uh, yeah. You need to hit the ground running in the group stage. Oh, definitely, yeah. It, there was a feel to it last year, whereas you went out and you said we're in the semi final anyway. But this year, there's an extra little bit of a bite that. You have to, as you say, hit the ground running and be ready for what challenge comes ahead. Yeah, and I suppose last year, if a, if a girl was maybe 10% off in her fitness, you weren't going to chance her, whereas this year, you're not yeah, going to have to chance. You're going to have to. You know, going to you have no choices. They'll have to strap it up and, and get on with it. Physios are going to be busy. Yeah, oh, that's for sure. Yeah, but, um, like, you've obviously the county girls back, you, you were kind of struggling during the league, but you were slowly getting the players back, but uh, like Jean was in there this year, got a lot of experience, and Elaine is always one of the mainstays. That uh, like their experience coming back is going to be a huge advantage to you as well. Oh, to be massive, yeah. Like, we always knew the girls were going to be coming back, and that was always going to be the the added bonus to us. Um, on top of that, we've a lot of younger girls coming on this year. You know, plenty of talent coming on. to just to nourish them into it and and keep them on the front foot all the time. Yeah, and um, like Borlan, they looked impressive in the Division One league. They were probably unlucky not to be in a Division One league final, and then you've had Finland. So there's no real easy games in this group. No, to, like any of the games, as we know from last year, 
there isn't going to be a kick of a ball in it. So it's going to be interesting. To, it will be tight whatever way it is going to go. Yeah, well, certainly uh, exciting times ahead and plenty of good football to look forward to. Kevin, wish you the best of luck and no doubt we'll be talking to you over the course of the next couple of weeks and months. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Tomas. Lar, newly up from intermediate after winning that intermediate final last year. Uh, no doubt you want to drive on again this year. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, it's a big thing for us, our first game senior there uh, next week. Um, uh, we're 18 years uh, going as a club when we put out an under-12 team and it was always our goal to get up to senior and I suppose over the last three, four years we felt we had the players and uh, to, to, do, to do that and uh, uh, we've successfully done that over the past three years come up from junior A, intermediate and now senior and yeah, proud moment for, for the club. Yeah, because you could see it there, the emotion in Latin last year and what it meant to not only the people that were involved, but probably a lot of people that would have soldiered over a, a lot of years to yeah. get the club in the position they're in now. Yeah, a lot of, there's an awful lot of people, not just the people involved at the moment, but people back along over the past 18 years that have that have worked hard. And, you know, uh, I remember playing the county final under 16 several years ago and we failed to score. And that's heartbreaking. And some of those girls are are there still playing senior now. And, you know, it's great for them. I'm, I'm delighted for the, for the older girls on, on the panel. We have a very young panel at the minute. A uh, majority of our girls are under 20. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big task to, play, to come up and play senior against some of the more established clubs, like the likes of and Brian Brews, Care, you know, Mile Rovers. You know, they're all the teams that we aspire to, to be as good as. And hopefully we'll be able to give a good account of ourselves and settle into to senior and drive on from there. Yeah, because you often say uh, some clubs might struggle to one day get up to that, but you seem to be equipped, like, because there's a lot of work on in and under this level in the club. Yeah, and, and again, we have some great players, our great management there, b b back through years. Um, I, if I start mentioning names, I'll forget someone, so I won't. Um, but, but there's an awful lot of people, uh, men and women, that have come on board and have given their, their best uh, for the club and uh, put an awful lot of work into the, into the skills of the game um, with the underage players. And you can see it now, there's some young, young players coming up, up there and they have the whole range of skills. And they're they're slotting into into the team very very well. Your group, like you've yourselves, Brian Burrows, Torres Arsfields, uh, Feathered, Feathered, and Clonmel Commercials, Clonmel Commercials, and yeah. it's going to be tough. Like, yeah. but uh, anybody can be anybody in any given day. Of course, yeah, yeah. And look, I suppose this year is, is an unusual year for a lot of clubs. We've been in lockdown for the last two years and majority of clubs had all their players available to them all the time. Whereas now you have J1s and you have people travelling and what have you. And look, every club is affected by that. So I think a lot of the games will be on the day and how, how, how the ball bounces on a particular day. Um, you know, all those teams that you mentioned there, they're all established. Um, Torres Sarsfields, you know, they beat us by a point two years ago in the in the intermediate final. Um, Feathered, three and four years up, uh, playing senior, hardened senior players now. Um, uh, who else there? We had um, commercials, you know, in the league final now, have, have put in a fantastic uh, league run and that's bound to carry on to the championship. So, like, we know we're up against it. Um, but look, we, as I said, three, four years ago, we knew we had the players that we thought were, were good enough to play senior. And we put a huge effort in in the past three years to to get up to senior. And and now when we're there, we want we want to give it our best shot and just hold our own. Yeah, well, there's certainly exciting times ahead and exciting times for Kelty Rovers as well. And huge championship coming up. Lair, look, we wish you the best of luck. And no doubt we'll be crossing paths over the next couple of weeks and months. Thanks, Tomas. Katrina Walsh, um, McCarthy Burris coming in after a good league campaign and losing county final this last year. I suppose on paper yourselves and Mike Carkey Burris uh, are two favourites, or yourselves and Mike Temple too are two favourites, but this is going to be a competitive championship. Oh, it's going to be very competitive, Tomas. Like, if you asked me this time last year who I thought was going to go far into it, I wouldn't have said Mullen Hohen. I think any team that can kind of get their act together, get a bit of momentum behind themselves and kind of stay injury free are going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the year. Like, so it's a, any anyone in the group are going to have a chance, look. 
Yeah, because we've seen what one horn, they kind of struggled two years ago, I suppose they were hit by COVID and that. But we've seen when they got their house in order what they can do. And it's probably definitely an inspiration for the rest of the clubs there in junior A that they can go forward as well. Yeah, it definitely is. It really is just getting your act together. And then if you get a bit of momentum, anything can happen really with any of the teams. Like, Yeah, because uh, like, as we said, uh, the t two teams that they'd be thinking straight away is themselves in Main Temple too, but the six teams they're in it cannot beat each other. Yeah, no, they're all real kind of football and teams like Arville Football and Club, St. Pat's Football and Club, Silver Mines are kind of building as well, coming up from Junior B, and Sleeve Lamont probably struggled a bit last year, but that'll probably stand to them this year, like the step up. But. Yeah, because we're just talking to Amory Martin and Peter Lane, and we're talking about Sleeve Lamont, like the the two Martins are after coming off a great campaign with Tip yeah. and the experience that they're going to bring back to Sleeve Le Mans, like they're not going to be a soft touch either. No, definitely not. Like I know when we played them last year in Littleton, I think, I'm not sure, I think only one was playing and even then she was only back from holidays. So like I don't think we saw even them at full strength last year either. So they'll, they'll definitely be boosted by the two girls. Like. Yeah, and it's a group that's kind of pure open, as we said, but you can't really afford a slip up. Like we've seen Mike Temple, we were probably the favourites for the championship last year, and they got up a good start against G in the championship. And in Temple, I think they were maybe 18 or 19 points up, but G got a run on them, and eventually that's what knocked uh, Mike Temple out of the championship. So. Uh, it's vital that you, you get momentum going from the start and keep it going. Yeah, definitely. I think you probably find from following LGFA tomorrow, so like a one point lead is probably safer than a, a 20 point lead in this game sometimes. Um, I suppose this year it's different, they're semi finals, so there's probably a little bit more wiggle room. But again, if you get caught in the hop one or two games, the next few games are probably even more important. Like you don't get another chance after that. Yeah, and we've seen uh, there's huge work going in in McCarthy Burris, and they've two time under 16 champions, and they looked very impressive this year again. And uh, is there many of them being brought up, or what's the story with? Them? Um, as of right now, there's none of them up. Um, but I suppose that's more a management question than me. Like I've nothing really to do with that. Yeah, I suppose that's uh, no. We just see a lot of clubs using uh, under 16s. I suppose. The fact that the way McCarthy are going, they really don't have to blood them at this stage now and let them develop a, their own course. Like. Yeah, I know there's a, a strong core group there of the juniors for the last number of years. Um, started off about three or four years ago with Willie Flynn, like, and kind of lucky enough, we're not relying on underage maybe the same way as other clubs are at the minute. Like, so. Yeah, I promise to be a, a good championship. Junior A is always competitive. Uh, Katrina, we wish you the best of luck over the course of the year and no doubt our paths will cross at some stage. Yep. Thanks, Moss. Pat, the uh, championship just about to kick off. Uh, you would be looking to make improvements on last year when you were beaten in the county semi-final. Yeah, Thomas, very disappointing. Um, we were going great in the championship last year and um, we just came to a semi-final and we, we just really flopped on the day, unfortunately and um, Gurton Hu did a, a huge number on us and they won, they, they ran out comfortable winners in the end. We were very disappointed with that and a lot of good work had gone into the year and to fall short then was, it was a bit gut-wrenching to be honest with you. So. And looking ahead to this year's campaign, I suppose you've uh, been successful at under 16 and under 21 again and you've had another successful league uh, campaign. Uh, so the club are going in the right direction now. Yeah, I mean it was terrific there. I suppose the under 16s was was great, really. You know, it's 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 a it's a lovely competition to win because it probably means you have some nice players coming through at that age, and you'd be hoping they'd be able to step up to adult um, competition later on. Um, uh, so look, that that was a terrific win that day, and again to before that, yeah, the under. 20s, which was you know terrific again. Um, I think that that game now was a little bit tight. All right, I think there was six points in it against Silver Mines, so that was a yeah, that was a, a tough match as well. And uh, but look, it's terrific for a club just to 
just to get those results, it, it does mean an awful lot. It's terrific. It is terrific. So, yeah, and I suppose looking at the group, your, yourself, Borland, well, uh, Latin Cullen, Nimley, uh, Rockville Rovers and Lockmore Castellani, Rockville have come up, uh, they've chosen to come up to play the higher grade. And Lockmore Castellani, a new club, and uh, they're going to be very competitive. Yeah, I think, um, well, I suppose Rockville Rovers there, I think Tom is doing great work there and uh, we're trying to get them going. Um, uh, Lockmore Castellini, that'll be very interesting. From what I hear, they have lots of talented players there. So that that's going to be very interesting now to see how they go. And um, and it, it'll be a new, it's, it's great to see new clubs coming on board and it's going to add a great uh, colour to the, to the championship as well because they're an unknown. Um, but they, I've, they're well able to play football, I think. So yeah, yeah. Well, you see the tradition that Lockmore Castellani have, especially in, like in men's, and a lot of these would be sisters and that haven't, but a lot of them are well able to kick football, but it's probably going to uh, put the onus on the likes of Holy Cross and, and that to uh, raise your standards as well. Yeah, and you know, you'd be talking to other clubs and some clubs, it can just take so long to win a county final you can get caught in a grade and for whatever different reasons, you can end up in the same grade and not progress. So I think every club, no matter what grade you're in, you want to progress and get out of the grade you're in and try it another grade. So we've been in our grade now for too long, really, but it doesn't uh, give us the right to get out of it either. And um, uh, so there's a few unknowns now in this group and there's, there's other clubs in it as well. So it's, 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 it's not going to be straightforward. And like, obviously you've been in this grid for a few number of years yeah. now and you're knocking at the door and you just haven't been able to get over the line. And it'd be a huge satisfaction if you do finally get over it. I think to be absolutely terrific. We've been wanting this for so long. Every year we want it more and more. And for whatever reason, we've just stumbled when it got to knockout stage. So we, we, we really need to try and kick on this year. The girls know it too. Um, so we won't be making any excuses um, as the year goes on. Um, you know, we've lots of good footballers, but it's all about just clicking on the day and being in the right frame of mind because you won't win a county final unless you tick all the boxes and everything has to be right. And they are hard to win. They really are hard to win. So it's a, it's a huge achievement for any club to win a county final, a huge achievement. And uh, you just mentioned there a lot more. I mean, huge admiration for that club. Huge admiration for the club. So, look, we wish them well starting off in, in in the championship as well. First time in it. Yeah, well, as you said, uh, county titles are hard won. And if you do get over the line, it'll make it all a sweeter. Pat, no doubt we'll cross Pat's over the, over the course of the next couple of months. And uh, wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. For the championship just around the corner. And no doubt you're looking to drive on from that heartbreak that you suffered last year above and Latin, that dramatic county semi-final or county final defeat. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to be a touchy you, subject now. You're kind of picking out a scab there now. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, sure, look, it was, it was heartbreaking, that defeat. Like, it was, it was a hard one to take, you know, but uh, it fairly cut to the bone. But sure, look, that's sport, you know. The, it happened to Arlo the year before, a uh, similar fashion. But... Um, yeah, no, look, we felt, we did feel, feel a bit hard done by on the day. But as I said, that's sport. We have to get on with it and that's it and move on for this year. You'll be hoping that uh, the way Aherlow came back after their defeat the year before, that you can do the same this year. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, well, I'm sure everybody, all the teams in the championship are hoping that they're going to be there. Look, it, this year probably is a bit, uh, or find it, everyone I think is finding more difficult because of, the COVID restrictions lifted, everyone's on holidays, there's all weddings on, there's concerts, there's parties, everything is on. So look, players are enjoying themselves this year, I think, a lot more. But look, at the same time, we want to try and get ready for the championship as best we can. Yeah, and just looking at the group that you're in, um, commercials, Feather, Galti, Sands, there's no real easy games. No, I don't think there's any easy game across the board at all, because all teams have come on par. There's very little in it, you know, and you'd see it through league games. Or, but even any of the championship games last year, we struggled in all the championship round games last year. You know, we, every game was hard. And it, that's ladies football has grown so much in tip. Like, you know, there's so many clubs, new clubs coming in. 
And, you know, it, it just has grown and teams are on par with each other. So, you know, there's no soft games. Yeah, and uh, like obviously, uh, like as you said, no, no soft games. Uh, there's no real room to foreign errors. Like you nearly hit to, have to hit the ground running from the start. You do. It's one error will cost you a game. <laughs> Could cost you being in the championship or out. Yeah, no, it's everyone has to be on par, like, you know. But, and as I said, this year of all years, with players coming and going a lot, you know, a lot of teams may be missing players for a lot of round games and even further afield, like, but you just will have to just get on. Yeah, with just it. talking to some of the other clubs and talk about J1s and that, I suppose. Yeah. With uh, the main the main aim really has to be to still be in the championship when the likes of them J1 guards come back. Yeah, it is. It is. Obviously, yeah, you're aiming for then, but like, you know, we'd have a lot of girls with serious injuries as well, like, that are out as well. So, yeah. Look, it will be a struggle, but hopefully we'll get there and that we won't have to use junior players because we have a second team as well for the championship. And, you know, we just want to get all the girls playing as much as possible. Yeah, well, um, Orla, uh, playing down uh, Prime Barrow's chances uh, as always, but no doubt we'll be running into you plenty over the course of the year. I look, wish you the best of luck and looking forward to working with you over the year. Grand, thanks. <laughs> John, the championship just around the corner, uh, Borland dwelling up first, uh, it's going to be a very interesting intermediate championship. It is, it is. Um, a fairly tough game to start off with as well. Borland have a serious team, um, so it's only five weeks now from this weekend, so four very good teams, so it's anyone's to win in my opinion. Yeah, and I suppose the difference this year compared to last year and other years, uh, there was a safety net there, you were guaranteed a county semi-final, whereas this year, the team to finish his bottom are gone are so gone yeah yeah can't afford any slip ups really. no no especially the first game is obviously exceptionally important so uh, I think the four teams are fairly on the par as well so one, one of the good teams is, is not going to make a semi-final or final so it's going to be very very tough for all four teams yeah and obviously um, there was disappointment there last year you probably didn't do yourselves justice in the county final but you'd be looking to get back there again absolutely yeah yeah. the final last year was very disappointing and we, we lost under 19 final as well so it was a t tough couple of weeks for the club but um, look we've been training now since since February so it's uh, been fairly intense and we, we reckon we have a good chance please God so we'll see how it goes yeah and the two English girls the, the experience they picked up this year with the seniors that's going to be a huge thing but then on the flip side uh Laura Dillon to join the SCL club. Yeah, she's going to yeah. be a huge loss. Absolutely, for you. yeah. It's kind of bittersweet. Absolutely. Ex Aaron Clara just back from, from the county, and Coral Laura is doing, having her operation in the next couple of weeks. So it's, it's a huge loss for the club and the county. She's oh, sure she's one of the best footballers in the county by, by a mile. So it's a, a huge loss to the club and very, very disappointing. But we, we wish her well now with her recovery. I suppose your league form, you got what you probably wanted out of it, considering you were without the county players. But yeah. We um yeah, we were very disappointed last Sunday. We lost to lost to Mike Carkey and um, didn't really do ourselves justice. Had a good first half, poor second half. Um would have been nice. Our juniors are in the in the league final, so it would have been nice for, for both teams to make it, but it wasn't to be and Mike Carkey deserved their victory. So look, it's not the end of the world to lose a league semi final, but uh would have been nice to get to a final. But. Yeah, because like Borland uh, Borland competed well in the in the division one and they were probably unlucky not to be in the league final. Yeah. And, well, the whole are coming on the crest of the wave of what they achieved last year. It's uh, <laughs> fairly worrying when you see Borland nearly, nearly beating Kara, like an established senior club in the semi final. So, uh, yeah, I presume Borland will be favourites to, to definitely get to the final at least. So, as I said, we're playing them in the first round. So, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But it's, <laughs> it's not, not going to be an easy one by any stretch. Yeah, and obviously, then uh, Cafe White. Uh, Cafe White are an established club as well. Yeah, so it's no easy game for no, this No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, it's four uh, four serious teams. So, as I said, whoever whoever makes it to the semi final and, and final, they, they well deserve it. But it'll be disappointing not to at least make a semi final. So, we'll see how we go. Yeah, well, uh, exciting times ahead. No doubt we'll be crossing paths over the next couple absolutely, of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Wish the best of luck. No, thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks for having us. Samantha, the championship just around the corner. Um, I suppose our Finn and uh, looking to get back to another county final after last year. Yeah, I suppose that'd be the hope, all right. You know, um, any team setting off uh, at the start of their season is looking to get into a county final and championship, and uh, that's the goal, all right. We saw that we were 
a small bit behind, I suppose, in last year's county final. So we have a lot of things to work on and we are working on loads of training. So um, small improvements, I suppose, in the, the youth coming up to our underage is fantastic too. And it's really putting on a push on the girls that started in the first 15 last year. Yeah, we've seen, um, obviously, the two English girls in with Tip and Clara really established herself and the experience that she got this year in the championship. You're going to be tapping into that now later on in the year. Yeah, definitely. It's great to have two girls back, I suppose, even at training now, really pushing each other and um, pushing all the other players. And uh, they are two seriously talented young girls with a bright future ahead. And it was great to see them getting game time with Tip this year and it'll really send them in championship. For club. Yeah, and just talking to John there, um, Laura Dillon's going to be a huge loss. Yeah, a huge loss. Um, again, a huge player for our Finnan and... Um, um, unfortunate for herself, I suppose she's been a small bit injury prone this year. Um, but look, um, hopefully her comeback will be better than her or stronger than her setback, and uh, she'll be back with us, please God, um, as soon as possible. Nicole, after your great year last year, up the intermediate ranks this year, another uh, level up again for one horn. Yeah, look, I suppose it's great. We had a, a good run of it last year, and. We're just delighted now to be up in intermediate and I suppose it's just it's a different challenge for us and um, I suppose we're competing in junior for, for a good few years and we're just delighted now to be up and competing with uh, at a higher level. Yeah and I suppose um, the experience that you got last year that's going to drive you on and uh, you got a taste of success and obviously you want more now. Yeah actually look we, we, did, we, did, we, did, we did had a good run of it last year and um, I suppose we were unlucky in the in the final uh, against Jude's at Dublin, and um, yeah, I suppose it will stand to us hopefully this year. But again, I suppose what we are up a level where you know it was a junior championship last year, so we're up again a level to play an intermediate. And you've John Lahey in this year. Um, has he done much different than what Paul is the Dolly continuation on? Uh, yeah, uh, look, we had a we had a good good run last year with Paul, and John has taken over the reins this year, and. Look, I suppose a new manager is going to bring bring different things and different ideas. So, um, yeah, look, I suppose we're all, we're just look, really looking forward to the championship now. Yeah, no <coughs> doubt you'll be looking forward to a few uh, great nights like what you had over the last twelve months and drive it on again. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we had some we had great nights last year and great times, and it kind of really brought the the whole community together. And yeah, look, it was it was great, and sure, hopefully we can we can have some good days again this year. Yeah, and wish you the best of luck, Nicole, and no doubt we'll be talking to you over the next couple of weeks and months. Lovely, thanks, Moscow. Keen, uh, championship just about to kick off, and yeah. uh, you're coming off the back of a good league campaign, and uh, you're in a group of death, really. So Tough group, all right. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, three of the final, three of the semi finalists from last year in it, yeah, so it'll be tough going, all right, to get out of it. So only two getting out as well, so it will be tough, all right. And of course, Templemore are improving the whole time as well. And yeah, yeah. Four players in playing intercounty senior football this year. So uh, every game is going to have a huge significance. Yeah, there's no game you can really take the foot off the pedal for this year. Like, so we'll, we're preparing good for it. Like, and we'll have a few girls back. Like, so right now we're kind of focusing on getting them fit and up to scratch for it. Like, so we can hit the ground running. You know, when it, when it does all kick off, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, and. Like last year, we've seen the, the extra time defeat against Brian Burroughs. Game yeah. that could have went either way. You were obviously missing a few players that day, but a uh, bit more experience from a, a couple of players and yeah. it could have went either way that day. That's it, yeah. We had a few under 16s playing last year and they'll, they'll be playing again this year. And it was great for them to get the experience, I suppose, of it to kind of toughen them up a bit. Like, and they, they know, know the nitty and gritty of the game now, you know. But, um, yeah, we were relying on them kind of girls like you know, just with, between injuries and people going away and stuff like that. So we do have a quite a young team all through the league and it'll be probably most of them from playing the same thing through championship like. So looking forward to the challenge anyway. Mm. So what a lot of people say, um, Ashley Maloney is a huge loss and I suppose That's it's the easy thing to say, but in fairness, like we're covering a lot of your games and she's yeah. there and she's encouraging she's the She's brilliant on the sidelines, sure. She's the easiest thing for her to be doing was just st step away completely. Yeah, oh no, she's still very involved. Like she, she's, she's great. Even at training, now she takes some drills and she's great to break things down. And um, just you know, just her experience and her, her presence alone at training is great. Like Joe, and even at, at games, like she's kind of still commanding a lot of stuff off the field. Like she, she's worked, she worked, she worked her weight in gold you know, to us, like for as, as a, 
just as inspiration for the younger girls, I suppose, and um, just even setting out the team for kickouts and stuff like that. She's brilliant. Like. Yeah, because the likes of Leah Flannery, Katie O'Connor after the under 16s, Quiva Grace, and that, um, them girls um, with Ashley Maloney being there, they would have looked up to her, and it's a huge thing for the likes of them to yeah. have her there. Yeah, it is massive. Yeah, yeah. They all, you, you see the response to her when, when she's when she's there around the training. Training is always better, all right. Like just to just to prove for themselves to Ashling, like I suppose she's such a, a profile pr player, you know. So uh, yeah, and yeah. I suppose looking at the other group teams there in your group, you have Ahrlar there, Myler Overs are there, and as we said earlier on, there's no margin for error at all. No, so. it's going to be a tough one. Like if you lose your first game, you're you're under a lot of pressure from the start. Like so. It's uh, it's just going to be hell for letter from the start, like, and I think every team is the same. We all know it's it's easy as a group of deck, like. So, I'm not saying that the other side isn't isn't easy either. There's no easy game like uh, anymore in senior, like. So, um, it's going it's going to be tough, like, yeah. But look, we're looking forward to the challenge, and so just all we can do is just put our best foot forward and go for it, you know. It's great to be looking forward to playing football now at this stage. Brilliant, like, sure, yeah, yeah. Especially the last couple of years. Yeah, with 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 COVID and all, like our our first year involved, and we're getting to the, the monster semi, and we had to give it up from Joe because of COVID. It was a, it was an awful sickener, like so to get every game played this year is great, like. Yeah, yeah. and I suppose no doubt. Look, you'll be looking to drive on. Uh, will, yeah. Keen, no doubt. Um, we'll be crossing paths over the course of the year. No and looking forward to anyway, yeah. to uh, running into you. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Thomas. Michael, the championship just around the corner, and. Silver mines up this weekend. Um, it looks like a good competitive group in the Junior Ed Championship this year. Yeah, this is my first year now getting involved, really. So I'm kind of coming in on the blind side. But by all reports, yeah, the, the six, five, six, seven, whichever, five, six teams look to be fairly even down along the board, yeah. Yeah, I suppose your first year involved, as you said, uh, you felt much persuaded to get involved in it? I uh, know, I enjoy I enjoyed the line, I enjoy working with but a girls on the boys. I was on the I done the boys in Ballingarry and I done the Camogie in Ballingarry. So when I was asked what I do down here, I, I had no problem. I come on along. I enjoy it. Yeah, and just looking at your group, like you're playing Silver Mines up first. Uh they were up from Junior B, have won the Junior B last year. Um that's not going to be easy either. No, no, I, they're on a winning streak, so they won't be easy, no. No, any team won't be easy. And it all comes down to on the day and work ethic and different things, so it is. So it will be on the day, which, which any game, really. Yeah, and I suppose your team is fairly young too, because we've seen you qualifying for an under-21 league final, and a lot of that team, our backbone, your junior team, just maybe only three or four that weren't under-21. That's that's um, that's true. Yeah, a lot of them are off of that under twenty one team. Yeah, it is hard to keep girls going. You know, it, it, they're working now weekends, working during the week, and it is very hard to get them in training and get them there, get them there for games. So they, what happens is they just drop off, and you are in the up with a with a younger team. So yeah, yeah, and I suppose looking at is. Uh, Eva Hogan is back, which she she was in with Tip during the year, and that experience that she's built up is going to be a huge thing for you, not only this year but going forward as well. Oh, massive, massive! What she learned in there now in the last three or four months will will be a great benefit to us on, uh, on the field, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and yeah. looking at the, like you've plenty of county experience, like you would have had, I think five or six county minors last year, so. There's the nucleus of a good team coming through in Pats. Yeah, but it, it, it could take a year or two for them to gel with the with the older players. Like, so it could. Anytime you go in there in the county, you cannot you can only but learn, learn, and, and uh, that experience hopefully will come. If not this year, maybe in the next year or two. Yeah, because um, like look at that. My, my Kirky Burris were beaten in a county final last year, albeit against a Super Monday Hall team who went on to an All Ireland final. Wayne Temple Tooty, they were beaten two years ago and probably let a place in the final slip last year. And then you've Arif and Sleeve Le Mans along with Silver Wayne's and yourself. So there's going to be no tough 
Or there's no going to be no easy games in this competition. No, and I, you know, you wouldn't expect it either. This is championship, so every game will be tough. Every game will be tough. As you said, my Kharki will be will be there or thereabouts of the will. Um, any of the teams, any of them. It, it all comes down to a bit of luck on the day, the hop of a ball. So it could it could come down to that, and and how you how you performing on the uh, how you perform on the day yourself. So yeah, and I suppose look at that. Like my character has plenty of experience. My table too. Aravel had Sarah Ryan in with Tip this year, the first one, the best senior with Tip, and then of course Sleeve Man had the uh, two Martin girls. And the silver mine scan, the fact that it's away at then as well, like that's what maybe an hour and a half drive. So, uh, like, uh, it's going to be tough. Like, no matter what game you play, it's going to be tough. Any game, any game, any game will be tough. Anyone worth their salt on the, on the day will make it tough. So they will. Um, traveling up to silver mines, yeah, and it looks like we have a, a bit of traveling to do this time. So it does, but sure, that's the way, that's the way the draw was made, so there's nothing we can do about it. Only get the girls there on time, get them warmed up, and hopefully on the day it will work out. So well. Yeah, I suppose it'd be the worst if you don't get at all, like maybe this time last year or the year before, uh, but you'd be willing to travel to the other end of the country to play football now, yeah, especially with the without, weather we have at the moment. Without a doubt, yeah, well, without a doubt. It's great, 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 great for the girls. Great for the girls to get be, be getting games, and now they know they have five games, so they do. So they just have to get down, work, work hard, and we'll see. As I said, what happens? It does come down to hopping ball in the day, so it does. So hopefully, we will hop in our favour. Yeah, when we can look, we wish you the best of luck, and no doubt we'll be talking to you over the course of the next couple of weeks and months. Yeah, hopefully, and anyway. hopefully we 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 will make progress. That's the the main aim of this year. Is to, Try and make progress to follow on, get a, a bit better than we made out on last year's performance, and hopefully we will make it up. Well, thanks a minute, Michael. Thank you. Mike started the championship around the corner. Um, I suppose looking at your league and underage, um, you'd be looking to drive on with that for the championship. Yeah, absolutely, Tomas. Uh, I mean, for us, I mean, it's it's building on the, the success of the 16s team, building on the success of the 21s. And now with a, with a good run in the league and look, we want to take that forward into the championship. But look, we're pulling out of the same, same, same girls all the time. And, you know, just looking forward to keep football for them going forward for uh, a good few more months. And obviously, you, as you said, you're using them players. Um, is there many more after that? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we set up uh, getting uh, an adult team for the club this year. And look, there's been great demand. Look, there's, there's a number of, uh, let's say, girls who, who aren't involved in the club that would be, you know, hadn't played 16s, hadn't played 21s that have come into play. Look, look you're, you're, it's a small cohort you're talking about, you know, six to seven, really, like, you know, and then there's, there's massive competition for, for places. But look, they're all putting their, their bit in and, and we'll see how we go in the championship. Yeah, and I suppose looking at your group as well, um You've killed all in it as well, another group, uh, another new team this year. Yeah, same position as ourselves. I mean, look, we, we, we've seen the challenges of trying to keep the momentum going. And look, we've been been very lucky so far that we have a very strong you know, group coming up from underage. Uh, we started the club in, in 16, so they've been coming up through through the ranks. And that, that gives us a base. But look, to bring in you know, further adults is, uh, you know, has been a bit of a challenge. But look, they, they've we put out the call and... and you know, number of people have, have shown interest and, and you know, give us good competition for, for places in the match and uh, throughout the year so far. But look, it, it, it is a challenge. This is a stepping stone and hopefully we, we can build on that going forward. Yeah, and would you have uh, targets set for the year or just play game by game? No, the plan is to win, uh, win the championship bout. Uh, we were we were extremely disappointed that we, we didn't at least get a semi-final spot in, in the league uh, due to, you know, the way that the you know, walkovers were, were judged. So look, the, the girls themselves were very disappointed. So we're focused now. We put that behind us. It's a clean slate now. And look, the championship is the aim. And, and, and look, we, we, we put in the effort and, and we're, we're going for the silverware. Yeah, we wish you the best of luck. No doubt we'll be talking to you over the course of the year. Thanks, Thomas. All the best. Sure, the start of the championship just around the corner next weekend. Um, Golden Confeacle in the group with Claire and Wayne Temple too. He feathered and won the horn. Yeah. And, Plenty of action to 
Yeah. Get Excited to get going, to be quite honest. Uh, we had a good run at the league, got to the semi final against our Finnan, lost out by a couple of points, um, and the, girl, uh, the girls really improved as they went on in the league. So I suppose they're looking forward to the championship and if they continue that reign of form, listen, they'll be giving it a good cut. Yeah, and I suppose looking at looking at the championship itself, like, uh, like obviously mine table two, you feathered them one and the whole second teams, but you don't All strong sides. For them. Like, All strong sides, but I suppose uh, um, we're a young club, we'd have to win at the uh, Junior D and um, I think we have competitive. You know, we're a strong side, um, all improving, the girls really had a good cut of the league, so I think it's uh, going to be a competitive and exciting championship. Yeah, and I suppose the, keeping the numbers there and staying competitive, that's the main thing. Really. It's, getting the girls come to training, I suppose, it's not all about winning, but when they get a few wins under their belt, that gets them excited. Um, and I'm sure that the couple of wins we got before we met our Finn this year will keep them there. Yeah, and as you said, um, the girls getting excited with a few wins and looking at um, it kind of brings other players on a few of course players it, it keeps, it keeps them interested it's not all about winning it's about taking part but at the same time without the wins and without the, the, the bit of I suppose good luck as we go along the girls will get disinterested so it's all about making sure we, we train them get them the best out of them and then when they get to the field they have to give it their all and uh, I suppose take a game by game or would you have a target of a semi-final or maybe a oh. final Listen, the semi-final will be great, but I think for the moment we take it game by game. We feathered first up um, at home. I think that's, that'll be a good target for us to start with. And if we can start well, semi-final is easily achievable. You'll have a fair idea where you are after playing feathered. We will. A good, strong side, an established side in feathered. Um, we've had a, a couple of run-ins with them over the last couple of years, so we know what we're dealing with. Um, so I'd be hoping that we'd be able to give them a good cut at home, use home advantage, get a crowd out maybe, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, sure. Wish you the best of luck. No doubt we'll be talking to you over the course of the year. Thanks very much, Thomas. Yeah, McGrath, Lockmore, Castellani. Uh, no club in uh, entering into the Junior B competition. Uh, exciting times ahead for the parish of Lockmore, Castellani. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have great tradition of hurling football in the parish, so to have the ladies involved again is fantastic. It's great to see so many of them back who played with Juvenile Club up along maybe under 12, even some played under 16 or minor or back through the years. And look, it's just great to have everybody back involved again. Yeah, and as well as, as you said there, uh, the fact that uh, the men's side of the club would be strong as a dual club, that must be an awful help to the girls then as well. Yeah, it's a great boost to the girls because they've been looking at them over the last couple of years, looking at the club doing very well and like they've been doing very well themselves with Camogie and the football with other clubs and now it's great to see that football has come back to Lockmore and we can give a good go at it this, this year now again. Yeah, and as you said there, some of the girls would have played with other clubs there and they were all playing, them girls would have been playing at a high level so that's going to be a huge advantage to you going into the championship. It might be, but then we have a couple that are only starting from scratch now altogether. We have a couple of girls that have moved to the parish in the last couple of years who have no football played and are only delighted to get involved now again. Yeah, I, but even at that, looking at uh, some of the girls that following your social media and that, looking at some of the girls that are going to be playing, uh, like a good few of them would have played the likes of even soccer to a high level as well with the likes of BT Harps and that. So all this is a huge advantage uh, going forward for Lockmore Castellani. Well, the girls will have great fitness from all their experiences in other places as well. I know, like with, like I said already, the Camogie, Camogie's played to high standard with Drum and Inch and well, a lot of those girls are from our parish, which is great to see. And now they're happy to come play football for us. Um, yeah, uh, they will have a little bit of an advantage, but a lot of them haven't played football for a long time either. We have a, a scatter of them that yeah, have played to a high standard, like you said, but there's plenty there that are coming back to it for the first time in a long time, which is good to see as well. And they'll add to it as well. Yeah, I was actually talking to Brian McGrath a couple of weeks ago and his knowledge of ladies football actually surprised me. Um, I suppose having the likes of Brian and that getting behind the club is a huge thing as well. And Noel and John and the likes of these fellas like getting behind the ladies football club. Yeah, the lads are brilliant to support the club and no matter what's going on, whether it's juvenile level, adult level, now with the ladies, they're just happy to see that the club is doing well. Um, the boys are great to, to like and share all the posts for the juvenile club on social media as well and we'll always go to the games when time allows and look if they're happy to come on and support the ladies football as well we won't say no to that either Yeah and I suppose long term goals um, well obviously the immediate goal is to be competitive in the Junior B Championship but long term I suppose try and get as high as possible 
Well, the long-term goal is to have girls playing football for as long as possible. That's what, that's the main goal we have here. If we win stuff along the way, great. If we don't, as long as we're developing players, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, well, I mean, no doubt, exciting times ahead in Lockmore Castellani. No doubt we'll be talking to you over the course of the year. Please, God, we will. Thanks a million. Um, championship upcoming now in the next couple of days. Uh, big group for you there in the Junior B this year. Yeah, big group for Rockville Rovers. Um, we're only a new club founded two years ago, so but we decided that to improve the girls in, in football, we said we'd put them up to Junior B, and it's a huge test now against very experienced teams. But, you know, it'll be a great experience for our girls, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, and I suppose... Um there's a lot of work going in there because um, you have a lot of girls playing under it and that. Yeah, we, like we started, as I said, 2019 was the first year we only put in on the 14 or 16 team and we started with 32 players and now we have 99 players over 14 registered, which is great for, for our club. It's a new club starting out. And I said, junior, this is our third year playing junior and we decided to go up to junior B. So, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge, but it's it's going to be a huge task, but uh, it's just for all the improvements of the girls. Yeah, and I suppose playing at a higher level, it actually learn more than playing at possibly a lower level and you could be winning matches and think you're going well but even um, you'd learn a lot more in defeat than what you would have uh, Absolutely and like playing stronger teams is, is, is going to bring on the development of the players and obviously we find in last year in Junior D and Junior C is that you have a lot of second teams that are used to playing senior football so we want to play against teams that are their first team and just see can our girls improve and we have a lot of young girls and we're looking forward to, to their development over the next couple of years and I think playing in the Junior B will be a big help to them yeah, and it was a new club in that your group then as well, Lockmore Castellani. Great to see another new club coming. Absolutely fantastic to see Lockmore involved in it, Lockmore Castellani. Huge tradition of GA up there, obviously. And a lot of their girls would have played with Turtles and played with Tempo over the last few years. And I know a lot of them would have played senior football. But uh, I think they're, they're a great addition to ladies football. And it's great to see all new clubs coming in. Uh, we started three years ago as a new club and we were welcome with open arms. And no doubt Lockmore would be the same. Uh, Tom, which is the best uh, look over the course of the year? No doubt we'll be talking to you at some stage. Hopefully tomorrow we're looking forward to a good championship. Peter, championship just about to kick off. Uh, Aravel up first. Yeah, first game up Aravel in Temple Um I think it's going to be a very, very um, interesting championship. A lot of junior A is a very competitive grade. As we found out for the last couple of years, it's, it's very hard to get, get out of it. But We'll give it a shot this year again. Hopefully, we'll be near the end of it. Yeah, because obviously losing the county final two years ago, and you were looking good last year, and you tripped up against McCarkey and probably couldn't recover. But then you came up against a great Mullen Hall team then when you needed to win that last game. Yeah, two years ago was our first year up Junior A. We um, when we came up the, that year, and we got to the county final against a strong hard training team. Um, unfortunately, they pipped us in the final. Last year, we probably never got back to the same heights. Um, it was a slow start with COVID and everything, but there uh, we got caught at the end of the year with McCarkey, who are always a strong rival for us. And Mull of course, who had a fantastic year going all the way to the All-Ireland. Yeah, I suppose what Mull of achieved last year is going to be Something for the junior team, A teams especially, to target this year. Actually, look, it gives everybody hope. Like when you see that Mullen Ahon can get all the way to the All Ireland after winning the Tipperary County Final, every club now wants to emulate that and try and get to the same place. But it, it is a big, a big step and a big task. Yeah, I suppose on paper, um, yourselves and Mike Boris are probably going to be the two favourites. The two you ended up playing the league final there uh, last week. And uh, but the other teams are obviously going to have a big set in as well. Absolutely, like I said, Junior A is a very competitive group. Um, Aravel there have a young team, a very strong you have Silver Mines coming in with a young team, uh, Schlievenamon and McCarkey, of course, are always tough opponents for us. And yeah, look, you, you, can, you can never write off any game, you take each one, one at a time. and. Yeah, because we have to see teams getting tripped up, like they're looking at long-term goals, but I suppose the safest thing to do is probably take one game at a time. That's all you can do is focus on the next game ahead. And um, look, we're, we're down a good few players this year as well, as every club is, with a few J1s and girls gone travelling and different things. So, uh, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be tight again. But 
I suppose the immediate target then with guards missing and that is to try and uh, probably try and uh, take one game at a time and hopefully you'll still be in the championship by the time them guards come back from their j ones That would be the focus and we've kind of used the league to, to bring up some of the younger girls, um, some of the county minors that we have and that even the county under 16s, we've been introducing them to the team and trying to fill those spots that the girls are missing yeah, until they, they do get back. But yeah. Yeah, and we've seen that with a lot of clubs, the likes of the under 16s and that, and uh, introducing them and blooding them. But the experience that the girls, especially the have reached an All-Ireland final, like that, that's a huge thing to be bringing back into their clubs as well. It is. It's great to have the, the experience of those girls yeah, that, that have played at the high level. Um, even the, just to settle a team down on match day and things like that, they, that that's huge. But you have to bring in the young players as well. We started the second te adult team last year, and we find that uh, very beneficial for bringing on these young girls. That it introduces them at a, a lower grade, and they don't get probably the same rough and tumble as they do up in the the higher ones. Uh, yeah, they're not really being thrown in at the deep end. Like. No, but it's great. It gives them confidence and gets them introduce them to the adult level. So we found it invaluable. Now we're struggling to keep it going this year with numbers and girls away, but we're doing our best. We it's it's too valuable to let it go. Yeah, and Peter, no doubt long year ahead and no doubt we'll be crossing paths over the year and we'll be seeing you up and down the sideline over the next couple Absolutely. of weeks and months. <laughs> Thanks to us. And Marie, uh mind up you up for the first round of the championship. Uh Looks like a good competitive championship this year. Oh, we'd be hoping. We're, we're looking forward to the championship in its entirety. It's our second year uh, competing in Junior A. Um, we were happy with our Division 2 league campaign, our first year in Division 2, and it, it brought a, a lot of challenges to us with, you know, girls away and leaving certs and all the rest of it. But we're, we're in a good place now heading into to championship. The girls are training well and you know, we've a good old relationship with Mind Temple too here over the years with games and all the rest of it, always very competitive games. You know, so we're, we're looking forward to the, the challenge ahead. Yeah, and um, just looking at the club in general, that, like there's huge work going on. And you're get, obviously getting a lot of county recognition as well. We are, yeah, uh, which is great. There is huge work, absolutely tremendous work going on from Underage the whole way up along. Um, we've good structures in place over in the club. County recognition wise, we this year was our, our, our first step into uh, senior ranks with Sarah Ryan. It was a very proud moment for the club. Um, at Underage, we have representation uh, in, in all county teams. So it's great, but it is down to the hard work and the dedication of the players, the hard work of the coaches and the committee over in Arval Rovers. You know, we've a very united club over there, and, you know, it, it's great to see. Yeah, and like it was obviously a proud moment for Sarah's family and that, but the club in general for her to be the first to oh, play the, senior football. The, we were absolutely delighted, a hugely proud moment for the Ryans. Um, but great excitement within the, the ranks of the club itself. You know, we're we're fifteen years old as a club and we've always had representation in, in county teams going up along, but never dipped our toe into senior. So it was great and very exciting. Yeah, and looking back at the championship now, it looks like a very competitive, like if McCarthy Boris there, last year's beaten finalist as well. Yes. Sleeve Lamont with the two Martins after coming off a great campaign with Tip. And you have still reminds up from Junior B last year and Pats are going to be very competitive as well. Yes. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be great games in Junior A this year. It, it's a, a competition to be watched. I'd say the games will be lightning. They'll be great. Yeah. And I suppose with uh, last year's Junior Air final was on in your own field in Sean Tracy Park. You'd That's be hoping right. that it won't be there this year, that she'll have to be travelling somewhere else. Well, that would be the hope, you know. It, it, look, again, I, I go back to we've we've a fine, strong panel of players there. Like every team in the league and all the rest of it, we were, you know, we'd, we'd a, a number of girls, quite a significant number of girls doing leaving cert and girls gone on J1s and, and all the rest of it. Um, they're back. They're, they're a great addition to the team. We, we don't traditionally 
introduce the under 16s until their competitions are finished. Do you know? But we have a wealth of players there. Yeah, it could be another big day during the week as well if um, Kira Horn manages to raise an All Ireland trophy with the tip under 16s. Absolutely. Uh, you know, again, hugely proud of Kira's achievements. We've had it's the second year in a row that we've had captains raising cups for their county teams representing our Rovers at the same time. Sarah Ryan did it the year before in Munster, you know, so uh, I mean, a big job with Kira O'Hora is she's she's been a fantastic captain with those under 16s. You know, we're very, very excited for Kira as well. Yeah, well, obviously you can see the groundwork that's going in to Aravel and definitely a, a club in the up. Uh, and really wish you the best of luck over the course of the year. No doubt we'll be crossing paths over the next couple of weeks and months. Lovely. Thanks indeed, Tomas. Thank you. So that's the views of all the players, teams and management of all teams taking part. Uh, joined now by temporary county board chairman, Michael Towie. Uh, Michael, exciting couple of weeks ahead, starting off next weekend. Yeah, it's great to see that uh, we're at the st championship stage of the season now. Uh, we've had a good uh, league um, campaign there and uh, really looking forward to exciting other championships upcoming with a um, uh, great uh, range of uh, clubs and teams being involved. Yeah, I suppose if we just start at the bottom with uh, Junior D, I suppose. Um, if you look at Group 1, you have Clare and Mind Tipper 2, you have a second team, you have Gold and Feather and Mun the Horn. And then the second group, you have Aherlaw, Ardfin, and who both, two team, both their second teams, Killinall, who were putting in a team this year, and Steve Phelan, who were making great progress. Uh, well, it's good to get these uh, second teams in, uh, having the likes of Killinall, Sleeve Phelan, and uh, Gordon, and, and Clarehan in there as well, makes for a good championship. Absolutely, yeah, I know there's a great um, range of teams there, obviously, uh, some of the Intermediate and junior teams having uh, clubs having uh, second teams is a great opportunity for the younger players to get a taste of adult uh, football. And uh, you have your Division 4 um, league um, uh, finalists there in uh, Art Finnan and Feathered uh, 2, both their second teams again. Also, you have Street Fair Maparees, which were in the Division 4 and the 31 this year as well. And um, which is great to see. And it's also great to see, obviously, Killing All coming in there, um, you know, a club with a great tradition in. Um, uh, football hurling and now coming into the ladies football as well which is great to see and uh, great to see um, further clubs taking part so it should be a very competitive championship um, and uh, it kicks off on the 17th of July going right through to the uh, finals weekend of the 2nd of October. You know, so we're looking at Killing All, uh, Killing All uh, people would they have plenty of representation wearing the tip jersey I suppose Girls, to, when there wasn't a club there, went away and played with other clubs. So they'll be looking to hopefully a few in the red and gold and wear a tip jersey in years to come, especially a new club there. Absolutely, yeah. and they have a great uh, you know, underage structure as well, which they begin to develop as well, with the nursery and stuff like that as well, which is great. So it's an opportunity for their older players uh, to come and play. And, uh, you know, they've had transfers in, uh, some of their own players returning, and then transfers in from clubs uh, surrounding them as well. Which is good to see, and it's it's great to see uh, the clubs getting up and running. Plus, also, um, having their underage structure to feed that going forward as well. Yeah, and it's what it's a one group of five, a uh, uh, group of four. So top two going through in schools. Yeah, top two in each group going through to the semi-finals on the weekend, the seventeenth of September. So that makes it a good. It makes the groups competitive. I mean, there's always some to play for and uh, some to push forward through. So it should be a very competitive championship. Um and. Uh, should be, uh, should uh, the, there was uh, teams there like obviously Division Four League this year with their Finn and Two and Feather Two be pushing very hard for that, which is great to see. You know what I mean. So look, it looks like a very competitive championship and, and great to see um, teams that are going to have a cut off of there and, and see how it goes for them. Yeah, and I suppose uh, when you move on to Junior C, like Templemore, My Rovers, Care and Brain Bros, all their second teams, uh, plenty of. Underage talent are going to be probably involved in, in this junior C competition. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean these are all uh, senior clubs with with, uh, with our second team, which is great. Like because I mean there's obviously very strong uh, underage structure in all these clubs. Um, you know, and you have to more who are in the one division one champions. 
uh, two years running. Brian Bruce are doing, are doing two champions under 21 this year again. So, you know, there'll be a lot of them players featuring in this competition. So, again, it should be very strong. Um, there's going to be a good competition here as well because, again, it's the top team through to, semi, to the final and second and third into semi final. So, uh, there's something to play for the whole way through. So, it should be a very competitive championship and great opportunity for younger players to, again, get the opportunity to play adult football and uh, push forward and um, in, uh, onto the higher grades as they, as they get older. Yeah, and I suppose looking at the Junior Bay, um, Holy Cross, Bally Cahill, who were beaten in a Junior B semi final last year, and Bohr and Duella having a second team there, uh, Latin Cullen, Emily, Rockville Rovers, and I suppose uh, the big talking point there is Lockmore, Castellani. We know what Lockmore and Castellani are in the men's grades, what they're capable of in football, and by the looks of some of their players, they're going to be very competitive in this competition. Yeah, like more Castellani, these have a great tradition, obviously, both in football and hurling, a very strong club, and it's great to see again another new club being established, and, and they've had players return to them and, and transfer back to them, which was great to see as well, and uh, they would be no doubt very competitive, the players maybe who've competed at the senior and the intermediate grades previously, so they would be a, a strong contender here. Obviously, you have your Division 3 league finalists here as well, uh, Holy Cross and uh, Latin Cullen, um, which again would be very good, uh, very strong as well. And also Holy Cross from 21 Division 3 champions this year. So again, they'd be a very strong contender. And obviously, you have Boher Laham, second team who came up from Junior C last year, um, which is great to see as well. So again, a uh, very competitive championship. Um, you know, uh, Boher Laham are a club that are making great strides, and it's great to see a second team up in Junior B, which is really pushing things on. So it's um, again, it should be a very competitive championship. And uh, yeah, hard to call this one. Uh, again, the top uh, top four go to semi final, um, uh, and then on to the finals on the 1st and 2nd of October. Yeah, and if I was looking at Holy Cross, you mentioned there the finals that they've been in and won already. And like they were involved in under 16 as well. They also won in under 16. A lot of these girls are actually up playing this. Uh, to shoot work going on in Holy Cross, Holy Cross, at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. I know there's, there's a great um, and there's great representation on, on the county teams as well. Um, you know, um, at underage right up to adult as well. So, you know, they're a, a club that are doing great work and it's reflected there in, in that. And it's great to see club uh, moving up the ranks there as well. And no doubt, um, success at underage has a great feed into this. You know, we have under 16 B champions, under 20 Division 3 champions. You know, they'd be definitely fancying their chance in the Junior B Championship, there's no doubt. Yeah, that's what uh, Junior A, like, Silver Mines, who came up last year, having won the Junior B, you have Sam Pats. Slave Le Mans, McCarkey, Mind Temple Duty, and Aravel. Um, I suppose looking at it straight away, the two Division Two finalists who were Mind Temple Duty and McCarkey Boris, they're, they're the two names that stand out. But I suppose there's plenty to play for in each of them six schools and uh, teams. Absolutely, yeah. No, there's no doubt Mind Temple Duty and McCarkey now in mean, Division Two finalists um, this year in the league. You know, have shown great and, and Point of two, we have been uh, knocking on the door here for a while in Junior A, you know, and they, they I'm sure they're going to give it a, a very strong push again this year. You obviously have St. Oran Silver Mines again, who are in the Division 3 and um, uh, under 21 finalists as well this year, and they're Junior B champions, and again, uh, you know, should make great strides as well. So, you look, this is going to be a very uh, competitive uh, group as well, and you have Arabe Rovers there with a very strong underage structure um, as well. You know, so there's great competition right across. You've under Mike Harkey Boris with under 16A champions as well. So, you know, you have great um, potential all them clubs. And obviously, sleeping them on there, you have, uh, you know, a backbone by Nora and Eve Martin, who gave excellent performances with the senior team this year. You know, especially, you know, uh, both there in the, in the, in the half-back position were, you know, great launch and uh, pads for many attacks. So they'll no doubt have, have, a, have a, a big say. And um, St. Pat's as well with David Hogan, who's a member of the senior panel as well. And uh, so, look, there's no doubt this is going to be a very competitive competition. And again, uh, you have the top four here going to semi-finals. Um, so again, it's all to play for in this uh, competition. Yeah, because like as you said there, um, like obviously, McCarthy Burris and Mike Temple are the two names that stick out. But like as you mentioned, Nora and Neve Martin, the experience that they gained this year, and even going back to Arava and Sarah Ryan, the experience she gained coming in late in the day. But that's going to be a huge help to... Uh, those panels uh, going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I know these players come in 
um, from minor like some of these girls are still minor next year which is you know a great attribute and just shows you look I mean that the, there's great potential in there and um, you know they're they're part of you know that the, the uh, of of that uh, team there and uh, they'll look at if they bring the uh, you know the, what they've learned from that and and no doubt are supported by their teammates and that you know there's no doubt they can be uh, have a big impact on this championship as well. Yeah, and I suppose looking at I suppose my top of two last the final two years ago at Tyrone Finn and they were looking strong last year and they slipped up against McCarthy and they couldn't get the victory in the last game against Mullinahone but. They'll be looking to write them runs over the last couple of years. I've no doubt, Jay. I mean, again, a, a club that have a, a good, strong under structure and, uh, you know, have been really pushing hard and there's no doubt now this is reflected in the Division 2 uh, league um, uh, into the final and that, like, and uh, also, like, they're, they're the second team there that were in the semi-finals of, of, um, of, the, of the Division um, 3 uh, league as well, which is great to see as well. So, look, they're, they're no doubt uh, really um, feel, I suppose, they've been knocking on the door for a while and I'd say really would, would lo love to push on. Uh, they definitely have a, a huge uh, litany of talent there of girls who played at inter-county level and uh, obviously with Ellen Moore at, playing with the seniors and some of the girls who have been with the seniors previously and, and uh, um, you know, are, are still there um, uh, playing at club level now again. Uh, there's no doubt it will be, it will be, have a lot to say in this uh, championship. Yeah, move, uh, I suppose the junior uh, just finishing off before we move on to the intermediate top four semi finals, is it? Yeah, top four semi finals, yeah, again. Uh, so two teams will be missing on that. So that makes that very competitive. Makes every round, the five rounds in it, all something to play for. So um, that's going to be really competitive and, and, and could go to the, the final round of games to get your final top four in that group, which is a, a great, uh, great, um, great excitement the whole way to the end of that competition. Yeah, and I suppose moving on to the intermediate, you've kept away. Mullen Ho and Ard Finnan and Borland and Dwella. Uh, Borland and Dwella have looked impressive during the league up in Division 1. And we know what Mullen Ho done in the competition last year, have won the junior and been unfortunate in the Northern Ireland final. Correct, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt Mullen Ho and, and um, you know, and it's always nearly the case, like the teams come up from the junior A, I always have a big uh, say in the Intermediate Championship. And Mullen Ho had a fabulous season last year, I say, just. Unfortunately, just uh, the final didn't go their way, but they had very strong performances the whole way through in the Junior A and the Monster Championship, and no doubt will have a huge say in, in that competition. Um, you have obviously Art Finn in there, who were runners up last year, and, and again, who will be looking to go one better this year. And again, also, you have uh, Boher Lahan there, who had a real close battle um, in the Division 1 uh, League semi-final there. Be care so look any team that's uh, at the top end of division one in the league will no doubt be again so again this looks like a very competitive championship and again this one uh you know there's no doubt kappa white um are there uh, and a, a team who uh were in the 16 um c finals this year as well and uh, they'll be pushing on again as well so look this is a very co competitive competition and you'll have the top team going straight into the final and second and third in the semi-final on the weekend of 17th and 18th september yeah, and I suppose looking at that, as you said, uh, the top tr team tr through to the final. Uh, last year, the four of them were more or less guaranteed a place in the semi final, mm -hmm. all, regardless of the results. And we've mm -hmm. seen the two teams have probably failed to win a game in the group. And I know they got two draws each, but they ended up in the final. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas you probably could have chanced if somebody was 50 50 leaving them off. Mm -hmm. but, Every game has something to play for in this now. So. Yeah, and that was suppose it's like that. Everything you, you look at what happens the previous years and see what that. And it's the same, like a bit like in the, in, in the junior C championship again. All these games mean something. You know what I mean? So from the first round right through to the third round of this one here, there'll be something to play for in this, and uh, it means that people have to put the best foot forward from the first day out because you never know. You know, there's no one guaranteed. There's only three teams guaranteed to be in the knockout stages. So, um, you know, if you step up the first day, you could be under serious pressure, and. Uh, so yeah, it'd be some very interesting games there um, in the three rounds. Yeah, it's going to be a hard one to call. It's literally like there's talent in, in the four panels like um, Borland were showing huge strides over the last year or two. And you can see that in the country represented. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, yeah, they have a huge, yeah, yeah, there's great talent there. I mean, obviously there's uh, their, 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 uh, their representation on the, you know, the uh, under 16 minor and senior uh, panels. You know, and they're doing great work as a club, um, and uh, really pushing on. And uh, you can see that in the in the success that that's bringing. So, 
there's no doubt they'll um, obviously with their and, and that's reflected and obviously you don't do well in Division 1 uh, by accident either so look they've um, they no doubt will have, will have a big say in this championship as well so yeah it's a very um, hard one to call obviously Mullinahon based on last year's um, you know um, journey and stuff like that if they can bring that again to this year would would will have a big say in it as well but you know again it's hard to maybe sustain things uh, from year to year and um, we see that as all levels include county level. I mean, you know, the teams that maybe do well one year, it's very hard to sustain it. So that'll be the challenge for them. But yeah, very interesting championship now. And uh, we'll, I'd say we'll go the whole way to the, the wire on that one in the, in the three rounds. Yeah, that's what we're going on to what they call the showpiece, the uh, senior, uh, starting with group two and pretty a group of death, Templemore, Ahardo and Mine Rovers and Care. Yeah, this is a, an extremely competitive group. I mean, look, you have uh, your county champions there uh, and Munster senior finalists from last year. You have your current Division One uh, le- uh, league finalists in Mile Rovers and Care, and you have Temple Moore there, um, who were in the uh, senior B uh, final last year. And um, so, look, this is a really competitive group. Um, you know, there's uh, from the first day out. Uh, you know, th- this uh, this will uh, push them, and uh, the top two. On either side, we'll go through to the senior A uh, semi finals, and the bottom two will go to the senior B. And uh, look, all these uh, clubs in, in Group Two, there no doubt have all aspirations of winning the county title, just like everyone in Group One as well. But uh, this is a really competitive group and uh, very hard to predict, uh, you know, because um, Aherlo have, you know, maybe one or two players um, who are returning from injury and stuff like that. And will they make the championship one of their, one of their marquee players and stuff like that? And um, look, no doubt. Um, you know, um, and uh, Moyle Rovers and Care have been really good in the league as well, so they'll be really having to cut off one another as well. And uh, look, Temple Moore there with their uh, county players returning will no doubt have a lot to uh, a big say in that championship as well. So again, very hard call that, um, and I'd say no doubt it'll go the whole way to the third round on the fourth of September. Yeah, and I suppose I don't know. They're probably just uh, getting through the league, but getting their county players back and getting girls back from injury and that. Mm. They're not going to want to give up that senior title. The title that they won hired, nobody will ever forget the, the goal the MMRs they got in the last minute. As we said, mm. coming out with Bresby Park only a couple of weeks ago, she's getting the habit of sticking balls in the top corner in the last minute. Yeah, no doubt, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, been a real uh, lead there in the in the attack for, for Tipperary this year. And, uh, you know, you, you have uh, Caitlin and Anna Rose then as well. I mean, um, so Caitlin's returning from injury, which hopefully... She get to be in the in the shake up in the championship as well, which would be great to see. And again, look at they have a, a, a very uh, strong history and tradition in the senior championship and uh, and being county champions, they won't want to relinquish that. Like and also, you know, you don't get to a monster senior final either um in the A side uh, without being a being a very strong um club as well. So look, they will have a big say in this and look, it's it's so hard to call this group. It, it could go um it, you know, you could pick any of the any of the, the, the four uh, of two of the four there to be in, in, in the A like so in the semi finalists so again, this uh, should be really interesting, and I'd say it'll have a great interest in uh, in that uh, group, group, uh, group two there in the senior championship. Yeah, I suppose even with group two, um, I suppose it's a small bit different for the other, but the bottom two teams in this will end up in a B competition. I know mm. it's not the B that they're looking at now; it's the A, but uh, there'll be something to fall back on. Mm. And I suppose looking at group one, you have Brian Bruce, last year's beaten finalist. Clonmel Commercials who won the B Championship with Federer, Galtier Rovers up from Intermediate after that great win last year and you've turned the Sarsfield. So, um, I suppose the top three teams that are there, Brian Bruce, Clonmel Commercials and Federer, are, they're probably on paper but we've seen there's no match one on paper so this is going to be hard and even talking to a few Brian Bruce people over the last few months they're still sore after the county final last year, so mm. they want they want to get back to a county final this Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I mean, look they, again, a club with a strong tradition and and in the senior championship, and uh, no doubt, uh, you know, look to be uh, very uh, their county champions early, and then just with uh, hit with that sucker punch in the last minute. Um, so there's no doubt they want to get back there again and and uh, go one better this year. So um, so they want to have a big say in that and 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 prepare very well for that. And they were um, Division Two, one twenty one um, uh, winners this year. Brian Bruce were so no doubt there's a good uh, cohort of young players coming through there that'll help uh, that. Clamell Commercials again uh, last year, um, senior B winners and also then the senior B um, 
into the senior B um, championship final as well. So again, um, and uh, had a, a really good league campaign in the group stages, I suppose. Maybe the league semi-final didn't go their way, but uh, there is um, no doubt that they will have a big say in this competition as well. And obviously you have uh, Feather there who um, have... Um, uh, again, uh, a, a young team that are, are developing at all times and will all be competitive and, and will, will uh, find the chance to the scoop. And, and also, and you obviously have Gadji Rovers who come up from intermediate again. And again, the momentum that often brings is, is makes them make them strong contenders there. And obviously, then you have Tarla Sarsfield. So, in this group, again, you have the top two going to. Um, Top two going to the A semi finalists and the, uh, the bottom two going to the B semi finalists. So then again, this group could be in a group of five. Uh, one team won't make the knockout stage. So that makes that a very interesting and challenging group as well. So from the first day out, there'll be people uh, looking to get the right results to make sure they're in the shake up at the right. At the, in, look, obviously, Evans will be focused on the senior A and want to be in the senior A semi finals at this stage and, and see how it goes from then, you know. Yeah, I suppose, like, Galtier could going to have nothing to fear, really. And, uh, on a Christmas away from last year, so yeah. they were, uh, I remember talking to Larry Roach before the county final last year, and it was like obviously they were nervous and that happened. What happened a couple of previous years and that was they're going to have no fear in this competition at all. No, no, again, and they were they you know they had a, a good um, league campaign there in Division One. They took a few scalps there along the way. You know what I mean? So like, and they're 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 building at all times. So again. You know they can build on the uh, the you know the success of last year, and you know the the, the you know when people uh, clubs win county titles, it's often a great launch pad. And again, they're a, a club that have uh, you know a very strong tradition at uh, underage as well, and representation at uh, you know um, uh, on the under sixteen and also on the minor uh, county panels as well. Um, so again, you know uh, they will no doubt ha have a, have have a good say in the uh, senior group one um, uh, competition as well. Yeah. And, uh Feathered as well, like Feathered, um, they're a bit of an unknown quantity at times, they could come out and do some great things and you don't know what to expect over the next day, but when they click, they can be any team in the county, no matter what age group and what grade, so they're going to be a team to watch them. Absolutely, oh no! I mean, Feather, you know, a, a very, um, a very smart um, players, and and you know, very good football inside. So again, like you know, as you say, when they when they get their game a game going and, and playing well, that you know, uh, they uh, will have a real good cut off them, and they'll fear no team there. You know what I mean? So um, you know, they they will no doubt um have a couple of players there may, um who have uh, uh, with the county senior team who were injured and maybe returning to hopefully um, over the summer months uh, back to the club competition. So again, that will hopefully be a launch pad. And again, they would have had members on the under 16 and minor county panels as well. So therefore, there's no doubt they will bring in and uh, a club with a, a strong tradition and they will uh, always have a, a, the, putting the best foot forward and having to cut off bodies of the teams. Yeah, I suppose we have a couple of uh, people coming in there after you to... Um, preview all these championships and we'll be getting the predictions after them but I suppose it wouldn't be fair to ask you as the county chairman you're more than welcome to sit in the fence this evening Mike. I think I'd sit in the fence so I'd be happy enough to present the Cubs to all the winners and uh, I'll leave it at that thing. It certainly, um, certainly as Americans have some great championships um, like we have from senior right down to your senior intermediate junior eight, seven co competitions because when the when the senior B comes around as well, like yeah. seven cups to the one there, and yeah, the senior B goes to Munster as well, which is a great opportunity, like for for a club as well to go into the instant the Munster Championship as well. So look, there's no doubt this this would be great. I mean, we've seen it in our with our county senior team, you know, retain the senior status this year, and they'd be very competitive there. Um, Unlucky, like in, to lose out versus Kerry in the Munster Championship, and then going on, then like I mean, you know, they gave a, a very good account themselves. You know, um, against Mayo, they just there was goal chances. Uh, you know that they uh, could easily have the converters. They could have easily been in, in the in the in the quarter finals of the All Ireland series, and all them players returned to their clubs, no doubt, will uh, bring a lot. And there's great, um, you know, we great under twenty one finals this year as well, and, and we've great league competition. So look, the other championship is, is really is something that we really look forward to, and. Uh, We'll have uh, going from the 17th of July right through to the 1st and 2nd of October. We should have a great uh, feast of football, something we all look forward to. Yeah, and I suppose the profile is going through the roof, like as we, we were talking there, like um, a lot of these games are going to be shown live, like we've 
over half a million to tune in last year and already in the league stages with 200,000. So Tipperary Ladies Football is one of the targets to probably hit between three quarters of a million and a million before the end of the year in viewership this year alone. Mm, yeah, it's, it's great to see the uh, you know, the live streams and, and uh, you know people are no doubt uh, feeding into that and, and, and viewing it and, and look, it still is a road to play because there's quite a few people still can travel and people maybe, you know, in various places around the country or even um, across the water or places like that, they can see all this, which is great. Like, and the great opportunity as well would be it allows people to look back at games that they, in, in a, um, that they haven't been able to see other games in the group and stuff like that. So look, at it, there's a great service there and uh, something that will be uh, widely followed um, all year, there's no doubt. Yeah, there's certainly uh, exciting times ahead and over the next uh, three or four months. Um, Michael, thanks for being with us. And we look forward to talking to you over the next couple of months. Well, thanks very much, Thomas. Thank you. So that's the views from all the teams taking part in the management teams. And thanks very much to Michael Towie as well for giving us a rundown of what way the championships are going to be run. Um, it's all kicking off this weekend. And remember, CK Streaming is the only place you can see it. On Sunday evening, we're back here in Feathered, where Feathered and Galtier Rovers will be playing in the first round of the senior championship. So make sure to join us for both them games. If you check out our, all our social medias, our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, you'll uh, see all other games that are coming up. And if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, you'll get a notification every time a game is going to be broadcast live. Remember, we're the only place you can see Tipperary Ladies Football. And we're looking forward to giving you plenty of good games over the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, we'll talk to you all at the weekend.